Um, okay, so this is, I'm going to read this story to you. Um, the, I, oh, the, okay, so uh, I, what happened is I saw this post and I thought, what else is happening with posts? So I scrolled up and I saw this big long thing by Android Raptor. Android Raptor is a very interesting character on the site, if you don't know. I thought this must be some kind of man hate post. So I'm going to read this. It seems long. It's worth it. Uh, this is this is the kind of content that our boy um, post is going to go flip burgers to protect and preserve on the internet. Dusty Shackle says, link at gibsongo.com slash stand your ground legal fees help. I am seeking help with my legal fees in association with my stand your ground self-defense case in which a new law is passed this year in Arkansas. While trying to make a quick stop at the local Walmart on our way back, a black woman decided to run the stop sign while exiting the parking lot. This black woman got mad my wife didn't yield to her, so they followed us through the entire parking lot, pulling up next to us so I couldn't get out of my car. They moved their car behind us, blocking us into the parking lot. I did not know it was the same people that had followed us until they got out and started screaming at us for over 10 minutes about how we were going to beat our white asses and kill us. I tried to explain to the Balak woman that she ran the sign and almost hit us. The Balak woman slapped my wife's hand and started chest bumping my wife. My wife told the Balak woman to stop or she was going to get shot. The Balak woman responded by putting her hand to the shape of a gun. She pointed her hand hyphen gun uh at my wife's head and said i don't care because i'll shoot back i'm gonna get my gun then proceeded to her car to look for her gun at this point my wife called the police we were waiting we reported the license plate number of the balak woman's car there was now a mob of over six to eight balaks surrounding us including a white woman recording the racist whites attacking the poor balak woman on her cell phone we decided to get our daughters out of the car so we could flee to the Walmart. As soon as my wife turned her back on the mob to get our daughters out of the van, the enraged black woman moved to attack her again, charging between my wife and I, separating us on different sides of the van. I could no longer see my wife. All I could see was the mob of blacks separating us. It was at this point I could no longer deny the threat to my life and physical violence these people were going to inflict on my wife, daughters, and myself. Fearing for our lives, I pulled out my everyday carry out and told the Balak woman to back up and leave us alone. Uh, the blacks did not retreat at all. Instead, they started screaming gun. He's got a gun and trying to play the victim and encourage the mob to commit violence against us. My wife proceeded to get our daughters out of the car as quickly as we could so we could flee into the store. As soon as we reached the front of the store, the police finally showed up. I waved them down and tried to explain what happened. The officers blamed me for what happened and accused me of trying to be the victim and that I should have walked away. They then immediately arrested me and put me in the back of the car without taking my statement. They never uploaded the woman's cell phone footage or retrieved the Walmart security footage. The police only took statements from the Balak mob. The Balak woman were high-fiving each other and celebrating their victory of getting me arrested. No one was interested in hearing my side of what happened or taking our statements. While I was in jail, there were other there with lengthy criminal records that were given much lower bail for the same charge as me. I had a clean record and my bail was set at three times higher than the Balak criminals I was being jailed with. The prosecutor, after only reading our statement from the Balaks without seeing or even trying to get the video evidence, offered a deal of misdemeanor charge, fine, and wants me to pay court fees with a 12-month suspended sentence. The prosecutor hasn't reviewed any evidence. The officer... Um has still not retrieved the video from the bystander or a walmart and my wife hasn't made an official statement luckily my dash can got the balak woman running the stop sign following us blocking us in and getting us out to attack us then it turned off because of the parking mode this is how we learned they followed us after the fact the bystander that recorded this event is a self-hating white and has a perspective that i'm a racist and attacked poor innocent blacks so she is not willing to help us at all we still haven't gotten any names or of anyone involved or videos from the police, so my wife is unable to press charges against these people. Every day I wake up terrified that I'm going to do anything that involves leaving the house. I have no way to defend myself because I took my everyday carry, and even if I had my everyday carry, I am terrified of trying to defend myself or my family again.
So this guy, conf- like he's, a, okay, in his story, he's trying to, to phrase it, that he was literally unable to do anything except confront a evil black woman. I want to point out that even if this story is completely and totally true, word for word, that is exactly what happened. This statement is the dumbest fucking thing you could ever possibly put out. I understand that he's trying to grift money from the retards on post that would read something like this and think, oh shit, man, I got to give him a little bit of my welfare money. I got to give him a little bit of my Australian military disability payout each month so that he can defend his rights to stand his ground in the United States. However, when you put out a statement like this on the internet and that is your, and you have an ongoing case and you don't even have representation because you've admitted that you've not hired a lawyer and your lawyer has not reviewed this statement, um, it may look to people that everything you did was racially motivated and that the only reason why you pulled out of the gun is because you hate black people, uh, which is not a good thing for your case. So it's actually profoundly fucking stupid that he would say this. And I don't, I don't understand. I don't believe him, by the way. I think that, um, like, specifically the part where, like, the part where it, it becomes unbelievable is, like, everything has, a, has detail to it. Like, he has, like, this extensive detail to everything happening. And then at some point, he just says, We're, there was now a mob of over six to eight blacks surrounding us. So it's like he's walking up and down the Walmart parking lot and it's like a Pokemon game and like wild blacks are just appearing out of thin air to, uh, to surprise you with an encounter. Like I, I, it's a, it's a little bit bizarre. Like where do they come from? Were they other shoppers? Were they in the car? Were they parked next to you? How did these, how did these magic blacks spawn next to you in the parking lot? I don't know. I mean, I remember, you know, Walmart's can get pretty busy, but like, where the fuck are you shopping where there's like eight black people that just show up out of nowhere? Um, I would, I would actually really love a, uh, a concealed carry person. You know, someone who, who is like a, a lawyer who is very pro concealed carry to look over the story, assume that it's real and then give an educated opinion on how you're supposed to handle the situation. Let's say that you are physically blocked in in a Walmart parking lot, and every 30 seconds, a new black individual spawns out of thin air and uh, assembles a mob around you. Like, I, I'm, I want to know what you're supposed to do differently to to protect yourself as much as possible in in the, the legal sphere. No, I know what black people are. I remember the Walmart in Pensacola very well. I've I've never I've never had an encounter like this. I've relaxed. Look, I'm telling you that if you're in a if you're in a situation like this, the last thing you want to do is escalate. I guarantee you, because they're talking about how they're they're for ten minutes they're having it, they're talking to each other. So instead of just saying whatever and walking away to Walmart, he's gonna like sit there and argue with her and you know have a back and forth with her and escalate it. Like just walk away. Um, I mean, literally, what is she going to do? I, I mean, I guess you can say, well, I didn't want to turn my back to the potential threat. You just say whatever, dude, and walk away. I've done this before. I don't, maybe I'm, I don't know. Maybe I have a magic skill to deescalate situations. They had to engage. Yeah. Yeah. Don't literally don't argue with them. Just say whatever, dude, and walk like that. That's, that's that, like that's how black people work. If you like escalate it, their ego gets offended and they start backing you up again. Yes, yeah, so I'm very aware of the Melinda Scott case. I'm waiting for a second update before I uh, talk about it. Anyways, my point is, if someone knows a, a lawyer who was like a big concealed carry person, I would love to know what they would suggest. And I guarantee you that what they would suggest is number one, don't escalate, don't have a conversation with someone's aggressive and they're in your face. Just be like. Whatever, I'm taking my kids to fucking Walmart, try not to run any stop signs, and walk away. Because they're not, people, gener- like if she does come at you and then pushes you down or something in the parking lot from, from behind, then you can pull a gun on them. That's like, that's, you're much more, you're in a much better position to actually pull a weapon at that point. Um, the second one, announcing you have a gun, never announce you have a, a firearm on you. 
Because then, like, like after he said, I have a gun, I'm going to pull out my gun now because you are threatening me. What does she say? She said, I'm going to go get my gun. Well, now you we went from an argument in a park in a fucking Walmart parking lot in Arkansas about a stop sign to uh, two armed people about to have a fucking Mexican standoff. So he escalated there by saying that he has a, announcing that he has a weapon and he intends to pull it and then actually brandishing the firearm in a Walmart. Um, like in his head, he, he thinks that he's like a, a cowboy that's fending off the wild natives. And re really, he's uh, he is. Uh, acting very melanated i don't know i don't think that what i've said is too unreasonable i understand you know defending your family and shit if you have a family you want to protect them but um the first line of protecting your family is not being fucking retarded and escalating a, a, an argument with a, a a mob of ever expanding uh melanation expanding around you Yeah, the weapon should never be known until you're like on your back. Like once you're on your back and there is an actual like attack on you or something in the Walmart parking lot, then you can then you can stand your ground. Because you think about like um, Kyle Rittenhouse, he was literally being attacked. He, he was being swung at in that time. Um, and then Trayvon Martin was physically beating. Uh, what's his face? I know it's like I don't want to I don't want to wait until I'm a victim to defend myself, but. You really should never announce that you have a firearm until you're ready. Like the rule with the gun is that you don't point it at something you don't intend to kill and you shouldn't let people know that you have a weapon. Anyways, I know I found this post very interesting. I wonder, I, I'm actually curious. One second. Let me pull up the GoFundMe or sorry. Give send go.com stand your ground legal fees help. He has raised three thousand dollars out of six thousand from seventy two days ago. Oh, this was like a full year ago. I missed this. I love this I love this banner, this low resolution banner. Instead of having like a picture of it him and his family or whatever. Um, what happened? My lawyer has filed another continuance until June. I will post more updates if anything happens. If I reach my goal, I take this trial. So what happened? Did he get off? Did he take the thing? We'll never know, I guess. Yeah, he... <laughs> Desert Eagle. <laughs> A woman in a Walmart parking lot threatened him. So he whipped out his chrome akimbo 50 caliber IDF issue Desert Eagles and was about ready to, to, to stand the fuck out of his ground. He was about to make that ground so so purified that it would be Israeli settlement. Okay, that's what was about to happen. <laughs> that's, that's his everyday caliber carry is a, is a 10 pound handgun. <laughs> Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CACA Lofa. Remember to like and subscribe.